Hello, this is Dr. Hannah Asil, and this is about photosynthesis. So this is in IGCSE biology or combined science. So photosynthesis is the process by which a plant makes its food using what? Using carbon dioxide and water and in presence of light and chlorophyll. This makes glucose and oxygen. So if we write the uh, symbol equation, remember that this is basically the opposite of the equation for respiration. So we take carbon dioxide mm -hmm. and water and change it into glucose and oxygen. So if we say what are the raw materials for photosynthesis, raw materials means the things we need to make photosynthesis, that is carbon dioxide and water. What are the products of photosynthesis? Of course, products means what was made by photosynthesis is glucose and oxygen. Now, what are the conditions of photosynthesis? Remember that photosynthesis, in order to occur, it needs chlorophyll and sunlight. So, if we look at a plant, where does photosynthesis happen? If we look at the plant, photosynthesis happens in the, in the leaf. Now, where in the leaf does photosynthesis happen? Remember, these are the layers of the leaf. We have palisade cells. So, the photosynthesis will occur in the palisade cells or in the mesophyll cells because they have Chloroplast. So if we say where does photosynthesis take place, it takes place in chloroplast, in palisade cells, in the leaf. What does the leaf do? It needs to take sunlight, it needs to take carbon dioxide, and it needs to take water. So how does it get these requirements? Remember that these are the layers of cells in the leaf. The leaf is covered from uh, outside by a waxy layer called cuticle. This um, covers the layer of upper epidermal cells or upper epidermis. And then inside we have the palisade mesophyll, which are rectangular uh, columns of cells, and spongy mesophyll, which are cells with lots of air spaces between them. And then we have the lower epidermal cells or the layer of lower epidermis. Now, in the lower epidermis, we have what we call guard cells. Guard cells are cells that have a hole in the middle, which we call stoma or plural is stomata. Remember that we also have in the leaf, we have xylem and phloem. And if you remember, xylem is the one that brings water and salts to the leaf from the roots. Phloem is the one that carries the sugars made in the leaf by photosynthesis. It carries these sugars to the rest of the plant. So we said the function of leaves is to do photosynthesis. Now, how are leaves adapted to this function? Remember that leaves have chlorophyll to absorb light, which is needed for photosynthesis. Leaves also have stomata. Remember that the stomata are the holes at the bottom of the leaves. These holes allow carbon dioxide gas and oxygen gas to diffuse in and out of the leaf. It also allows water vapor to diffuse out of the leaf, which we refer to as transpiration. So, chlorophyll. In order to do photosynthesis, the leaf needs to have chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a green pigment or a green colored substance found in chloroplast. So, remember, leaves have chloroplast. Chloroplast contain chlorophyll. Now, what is the function of chlorophyll? It traps light energy and converts it to chemical energy. And this is used in photosynthesis to convert carbon dioxide and water to glucose and oxygen. So the function of chlorophyll is 
first it traps the light energy and then it converts this light energy to chemical energy to be used in photosynthesis. Now, how does the leaf get carbon dioxide? You should know that carbon dioxide enters from the air outside. So from the air, the carbon dioxide enters the leaf by diffusion through the stomata, the tiny holes at the bottom of the leaf. Carbon dioxide diffuses in through the stomata into the air spaces in the leaf and then it diffuses through the cells until it reaches the chloroplasts. Remember the chloroplast, this is the part of the cell where photosynthesis happens. Okay, how does the leaf get water? Well, water enters through the root hair cells in the roots by the process of osmosis. The water is absorbed into the roots by osmosis. It then goes up through the xylem vessels to the leaves. Remember that water is needed in the plant for several things. We are talking about using water in photosynthesis to make sugar and oxygen, but also the water is needed to make the cells turgid, to make the cells stiff. It also acts as a solvent for reaction in the cells. So all reactions in the cells need water as a solvent. The root hair cells, we said the function of the root hair cell is absorption of water and salts from the soil. Now, how are they adapted to this function? Remember that root hair cells have finger-like projections or extensions for more surface area for more absorption of water and salt. So, in addition to the normal parts of a plant cell, cell wall, cell membrane, nucleus, cytoplasm, and so on, a large vacuole, it also has a finger-like projection. This gives it more surface area to absorb more water and so on. So we should be able to explain investigations regarding photosynthesis. For example, you may be required to explain an investigation to show the pathway of water through a plant. How does water move through a plant? So in this case, we can place a shoot of a leafy plant in a solution of dyeing water. So we have colored water, and we are going to allow the plant to absorb this colored water. So leave the shoots in light for an hour, examine the leaf, cut the stem, and examine it. So when we examine the leaf, we'll find that there is blue color in the veins and the midrib of the leaf because this is where we have xylem vessels. The xylem comes to the uh, leaves and goes through the midrib and the veins and so on. And then when the stem is cut, so if we cut the stem, the blue color is seen in the xylem. You remember the position of the xylem in the stem? So you will find that the xylem becomes blue. That means that the blue color has moved up through the xylem. Now, the glucose that is made by photosynthesis, the plant has taken carbon dioxide and water and did photosynthesis, and what comes out is glucose. Now, you should realize that the main use of glucose is for respiration to release energy. So, most of the glucose that is made is used by the cell to release energy. But then, we need glucose or sugars for other things so we need for example to react it with nitrates to form amino acids which form proteins and we need that to make a lot of things in the cells enzymes and cell structures like cytoplasm so glucose with nitrates makes protein or we convert it to sucrose and send it through the phloem to other parts of the plant so we send it to the flowers, to the fruits, to the roots, through the flow. Or we can store any excess glucose. Remember that excess glucose is stored in the plant in the form of starch. And this can be stored in the seeds or in the leaf or any uh, part of the cell. 
glucose is also converted to cellulose and used to make cell wall. Or we can convert it to fats and store it in the seed. Okay, so if we want to see if a leaf has done photosynthesis or not, we test the leaf for presence of starch because if the leaf has done photosynthesis, then it will store the glucose in the form of starch. If it doesn't have any starch, that means it did not do any uh, photosynthesis. So in order to test the leaf for starch, the problem is the leaf is green. I need to remove the green color and stop all reactions in order to test it for the presence of starch. So the first thing we do is put the leaf in boiling water. This is to stop all reactions or to break down the cell wall so that it's easier to test the leaf. Uh, then we put it in ethanol. This ethanol is to remove the green color because the green color of chlorophyll will dissolve in the ethanol, leaving the leaf uh, white. Then we take this leaf and put it in cold water. This is to soften the leaf. And then we test uh, the leaf using iodine solution. Remember that iodine solution reacts with uh, starch to give a dark blue black color. So, the green leaf, first we put it in boiling water to stop all reactions. Then we put it in ethanol to dissolve the green color or to remove the green color. Then we put it in water to soften it, and then we test it with iodine solution. So, for example, if I want to do an investigation to show that chlorophyll is needed for photosynthesis, we can get this type of leaf in which part of it is green and part is white. This kind of leaf is called a variegated leaf. So, part of it is green, and that means that is the part that has chlorophyll, and that means if I test it with iodine solution, this is the part that will become dark blue-black because it has starch. Now, the white part of the leaf has no chlorophyll, so it will not do photosynthesis. So if I test it with iodine solution, the iodine solution remains reddish-brown. This is the kind of experiment we do if we want to show the effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis. So we said we need light, so we can put a pondweed, that's a water plant, and we invert a funnel and a test tube over it. And the water, we're going to add sodium hydrogen carbonate so that now the plant has water and carbon dioxide. Sodium hydrogen carbonate is something that releases carbon dioxide into the uh, water. So the plant has water and carbon dioxide. And then I'm going to put the lamp at different distances from the plant and measure what? We're going to measure the amount of oxygen that is given off so we can measure the number of bubbles per minute, for example, and change the distance of the lamp so that we change light intensity. Of course, as the lamp comes closer to the plant, then there is more bubbles of oxygen per minute. Now, in some of these experiments, you will be required to suggest a control. What do we mean by a control? A control means you're going to repeat the experiment but without the factor that you're testing. So here we're testing for light. We're going to put everything as we did, but no light. So we're going to place it in the dark. So of course, if you place this plant in the dark, it's not going to do photosynthesis. So there is no bubbles of gas giving off. That proves, or that shows me, that the bubbles we had at the beginning were due to photosynthesis, not to anything else in the uh, apparatus. Okay, so this is called a control, repeating the experiment without the factor we're testing. We're testing the effect of light, so you repeat it without light. Okay, or you could do this experiment, so we can get the leaf and cover part of it with a black uh, cover. So 
the part that is covered will not be able to do photosynthesis because it will have no light. So when I test it with iodine solution, the iodine solution remains yellow or reddish brown. Remember the iodine solution, we refer to it as yellow or reddish brown. Um, the part that has light, the part that was not covered, this part will do photosynthesis. So when we test it for, with iodine solution, it turns blue-black due to the presence of starch. This investigation is to show that carbon dioxide is needed for photosynthesis. So I'm going to bring a leafy plant in a potted pla leafy plant, and I'm going to cover it with a plastic bag. This cover prevents entrance of any air or its contents into the plant. And then I'm going to control the amount of carbon dioxide inside the plastic bag. So in one of them, I'm going to put a dish containing soda lime or potassium hydroxide. This is because soda lime or potassium hydroxide absorbs the carbon dioxide from the air. So the plant on the left has no carbon dioxide because the soda lime absorbs carbon dioxide from the air. Now, I'm going to put a control. Now, my control here, I'm going to put a dish in exactly the same way, but in this case, it contains sodium hydrogen carbonate, which we said provides carbon dioxide for the plant. So the plant on the right has carbon dioxide. Of course, if I take a leaf from each plant and test it, you will find that the leaf, from the one that had soda lime, no carbon dioxide, no photosynthesis, the leaf will be uh, yellow, or the iodine solution will turn yellow. The uh, one on the right, it has carbon dioxide, so it will do photosynthesis, and that means that the leaf has starch, so the iodine solution will turn uh, blue-black. Please notice that for all these experiments, we have to de-starch the plant. What do we mean by de-starch the plant? I have to put these plants overnight for at least 24 hours in the dark so that they use up any starch that is already stored in it. So I want to start any experiment without any starch in it so that if it does photosynthesis, then it will make starch, no photosynthesis, no starch. So all these plants are de-starch. De-starch means they were put in the dark for 24 hours before starting the experiment. Okay, so this is a typical question. He has a leaf that is, we called it, variegated. It has a green part and the white part. Of course, we said the green part has chlorophyll. The white part, no chlorophyll. And then we're going to cover part of it with a black paper. And that means the one that is covered has no light. The other parts will have light. And the question is, in which part will we find starch? So we have parts one, two, three, and four. Will I find starch in one? If we do test of iodine solution. And part one, what do we see? we see that the solution is yellow or it remains yellow. That is because part one, it has chlorophyll, but it has no light, so it cannot do photosynthesis, so there is no starch. What about part two? Part two has light and chlorophyll, so when we test it with iodine solution, it turns blue-black. That is because it has both chlorophyll and light. Now, what about part three? Part three has light but no chlorophyll, so the iodine solution will be yellow. Part 4 has no light, no chlorophyll, so no photosynthesis, and this iodine solution remains yellow. Remember that each plant does both respiration and photosynthesis. Remember that if we put a plant in light, then it does photosynthesis. Now, what does photosynthesis do? First of all, we said photosynthesis occurs in the chloroplast. So if you give the plant light, the chloroplast in the cells will take water and carbon dioxide and make photosynthesis. 
But when it makes photosynthesis, it releases glucose and oxygen. But then the leaf is like any other living organism. It is something that does respiration. Now, respiration is something that occurs inside a structure called mitochondria in the cells. So the cells have mitochondria. This is where respiration happens. Now, you should know that respiration takes glucose and oxygen and uh, changes it into carbon dioxide and water and releases energy so these two processes are both occurring in a leaf but which one is faster that's what makes a difference so in presence of light photosynthesis is faster so more carbon dioxide is absorbed but in absence of light respiration is faster so more carbon dioxide is released are we following now, to test for the presence of carbon dioxide, we use something called hydrogen carbonate indicator. This is something that has different colors by, uh, depending on the amount of carbon dioxide in the air. Remember that carbon dioxide is acidic. So, hydrogen carbonate indicator, when we have a lot of carbon dioxide, it turns yellow. That is the color of this indicator. When we have a lot of carbon dioxide now if we have less carbon dioxide in the air then this indicator turns purple remember that if the amount of carbon dioxide in the air is normal it will be the red or the pink that is in the middle so i'm going to put three leaves in three test tubes the first one is tube a it is a green leaf i'm giving in light and so it will do more what green with light it will do more photosynthesis doing more photosynthesis means it takes the carbon dioxide from the air and that means the air around the solution will have less carbon dioxide or low percentage of carbon dioxide and that means that the solution in a will turn purple Remember that these colors will be provided in the question. So you don't need to sit down and memorize. But anyway, just know that when we have low carbon dioxide, then the solution in A will turn purple. Now, what about B? B has a variegated leaf, and that means part of it is green doing photosynthesis, and part of it is white doing only respiration so actually the amount of carbon dioxide that is taken in by the green part in photosynthesis will be given out by the white part in respiration so actually i'm not taking or i'm not changing the amount of carbon dioxide in the air so i will end up with normal levels of carbon dioxide and that means the solution remains red if I put the green leaf in a tube, but I covered it with a black paper in test tube C, so this is green, but actually it has no light, so it's not doing photosynthesis, so it is doing only what? It is doing only respiration. Respiration is something that gives carbon dioxide to the air, so we have high percentage of carbon dioxide, and that means the solution turns yellow. This is another form of this type of question, where he has test tubes that have water shrimp and a pond plant. Now, you should know water shrimp is an animal. An animal does only respiration, so it will give out carbon dioxide to the surrounding solution. The pond weed is a plant. Well, if it has light, it will do more photosynthesis. If there is no light, then it will do more respiration. So let us look at these tubes. In tube A, I have only an animal, water shrimp. So it is doing only respiration, giving out carbon dioxide to the surrounding solution. And when we have high carbon dioxide, the indicator is yellow. What about tube B? Tube B has pondweed, which is a plant, but then it is covered by a light proof box. So the plant has no light. So it is doing only respiration, and that means giving out carbon dioxide, 
and that means the indicator is yellow. Uh, tube C, it has light, but then it has only a water shrimp, which is an animal. The animal does respiration, whether it's light or dark. So respiration gives out carbon dioxide. I have high carbon dioxide. The indicator will turn yellow. But in D, I have a plant that is provided with sunlight. So this plant now is doing more photosynthesis. Photosynthesis takes carbon dioxide from the air or from the solution. So the carbon dioxide in D is low. And that means the indicator turns purple. Are we following all of this? Another one, which test tube contains the least carbon dioxide after one hour? Least carbon dioxide means more photosynthesis. Which of these tubes I will have lots of photosynthesis? So of course that is in tube C. A has animal and plant and it's not, so all, uh, it doesn't have light. So they're all doing respiration, giving out carbon dioxide. B, it's a plant, but covered, so no photosynthesis, so it is doing only respiration. So C is the one that is taking carbon dioxide for uh, photosynthesis. D, of course, is just an aquatic animal, so it's doing only respiration. So what are the factors affecting rate of photosynthesis? Remember that. I will have faster photosynthesis if I have more light intensity, a higher temperature, carbon dioxide is more, more carbon dioxide concentration, more water available to the plant. All of these will help to increase the rate of photosynthesis. Now, what are the mineral requirements of the plant? You should remember that the plant needs what? What type of mineral salts? We need nitrates. Nitrates provide nitrogen. They are used to make proteins. And remember, the plants need proteins for growth and tissue repair and to make enzymes, cell membranes, cytoplasm. What if I don't give my plant nitrogen or nitrates? Then the plants will be small because they're unable to make proteins. So if we have a plant that's not growing fast, then this means it is not having enough nitrates. Okay, another mineral that is needed for the plant is magnesium ions. I need to give my plant magnesium ions to make chlorophyll for photosynthesis. So if we don't give a plant enough magnesium, then the leaves will not have chlorophyll, so the leaves will be yellow. Of course, if they're yellow, that means they cannot do photosynthesis and eventually they will die so remember that magnesium is needed to make chlorophyll needed for photosynthesis and that's the end of this chapter i hope all of this was useful to you uh thank you for listening